just doing the math, you could get a bus here, stay where we stayed, and have entry to this temple and pay about the same as what it would be to go into Grand Palace and Wat Pro. Wow. There's your options. I think this is better. Add it to the Thailand trip. Today, we're exploring our new favorite place in Thailand, Sukhothai. After a six hour bus ride from Bangkok, we arrived at this historic gem, the ancient capital of the Thai Empire. Sukhothai is home to over 200 ancient ruins, a spectacular UNESCO World Heritage Site, and a unique night market. You need to add this marvel to your Thailand trip. It sees significantly fewer tourists than other cities in Thailand, preserving the authentic authentic feel of the country perfectly. We'll be getting amongst the history and culture by exploring the town and historic ruins on two wheels before ending the day at a vibrant night market in the heart of the ancient city. We've done a Thailand trip before and last time we were here we pretty much caught a bus all the way from Bangkok to the north in Chiang Mai. Missing over half the country. So when we knew we were coming back we wanted to look into the smaller, lesser travelled towns that we could see along the way. Welcome to the ancient city of Sukhothai. Traveling in the rainy season means we have to be somewhat flexible with our plans. We had all intentions of being out for like a half an hour already, but it's raining. So we're gonna wait, have an extra coffee at our hotel and then go to the historic park. I say flexible to a point because we are only here for one day. So even if it rains all day, we do need to go out and see this place. I hope that it doesn't though. Finally, the rain has stopped and we are out and about exploring. There is one main thing to do here in Sukhothai and that is to explore Sukhothai Historic Park which is home to over 200 temples, ruins, stupas, everything you can imagine. The problem is it stretches over 70 square kilometres. This is the solution. <laughs> We had read online that there were different areas that you can book into and it's like 100 baht per region but it was 100 baht for us and 10 baht for the bike. Pretty sure for everywhere. Because the historic park is full of temples and religious sites, as with everywhere else in Thailand, you do need to dress modestly which means I am going to be hot today. Covering my shoulders, my knees, my torso. Being respectful. The main way people get around in the Sukhothai Historic Park is hiring bikes and it was only 30 <laughs> and they were only 30 baht per day like, and we don't have to return it till 5pm which seems crazy to me I think we're going this way off the bat sorry in advance for any pronunciations we're generally trying our hardest we both speak English solely so it is difficult for us to sometimes get the pronunciations correct our first stop for the day is Wat Maham Thet this is the historical spiritual center of Sukhothai because it houses the seated Buddha and iconic lotus shaped stupas it was built in the 13th century which is when Sukhothai was the capital of Thailand this is our first temple of the day and we're here alone. Yeah. Almost alone. <laughs> He's our new guide. been here for like an hour by ourselves. It's a very hot tip to get here 
ASAP. Like, it opens at 6 o'clock, get here between 6 and 6.30. It's been incredible and so quiet and silent. Having all of these monuments to ourselves is unreal. The fact that we're at a 13th century temple by ourselves, being allowed to walk on it and touch it and soak it all in. Can't climb on it, no. but... But there's signs. There's areas that you can. But now the tour groups have started to join us, so we're going to head on to the next one. It's 8am now, and the tour groups are officially here. I did not think there was this many tourists in Sukhothai. <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Look at these groups, it's crazy. Vlogging and writing is not a skill I think I have, so this might end badly. But the next temple we're going to is Wat Sai Si. It is kind of like its own temple on its own island in a lake. It looks really, really cool. It's not as big as the last one, but I think it's got its own like specialness. And it looks like all the crowds go to the big temple first. So once again, we're semi alone. Now I don't have enough hands to stop recording. <laughs> Everything I read online and the sign at the ticker office says that you should dress modestly, which means covering your shoulders and your knees. But I have seen multiple people now with their shoulders out in short mini skirts or mini shorts. So I guess they're pretty flexible with that rule. I would still personally do it just to be respectful of this area. And we just spoke to some other tourists and apparently there is a night market right here within the ruins tonight. So I know what we're doing for dinner. Hi, Jordan from the future here. Currently coming to you from the balcony of this gorgeous, I'm talking stunning hotel that they're staying in, but you'll see that a bit later. Right now, I wanted to take some time to thank the sponsor of this video, Holofly. We've been in Thailand now for about three weeks and the whole time we have been completely connected thanks to our eSIM from Holofly. We've been traveling from huge cities like Bangkok crew to smaller, lesser known places like Sukhothai and have never had connectivity issues at all. We activated our eSIM as soon as we hit the ground in Bangkok and have been using it every single day. From ordering Ubers to navigating cities to translating pretty much everything, we haven't learnt much Thai at all. But the one thing that sets Olaflight apart from its competitors are the unlimited data packages. There hasn't been a single time we've been worried about going over our data allowance and we've never had a fear of being charged crazy unforeseen fees. We've been completely covered. And because all the flight covers 180 destinations, we don't have to do anything when we cross the border tomorrow. Yes, we are leaving Thailand, but we're coming back, we promise. If an eSIM like this seems like something you need for your travels, use the code Jordan and Emily at checkout for 5% discount, or click the link in the description below. Happy travels, let's get back to Sukhothai. <laughs> Temple is definitely not as exciting as the first temple we went to. It's there on the screen. <laughs> but it is very serene and unique here. We are covered by frangipani trees with all of these, I think they're herons. Yeah, all white birds. White birds with long necks flying around. We're surrounded by water as well. And yet again, just as we're leaving, all of the tour groups show up. It's kind of our cue to leave. It's like. <laughs> Okay, time to move on. I am loving Sukhothai though. This has to be added to your Thailand trip. It's like a hidden gem. I know that there are a lot yeah. of tourists here, so it mustn't be a hidden gem. Like it's a very well-known thing. But back in 2022, when we came to Thailand, I don't remember hearing about this place. Never heard of it at all. It looks like it might be quite popular with like Europe. There's mm -hmm. a lot of French and Italian tour groups here, but not many English speaking. Yeah. But I think it's just so much fun to really connect with the Thai culture and have all of these sorts of places yeah. to yourself. Because think of Bangkok, those temples were mm. double the price and heaps more people. More than double some temples. We didn't even go into them because they're so expensive. <laughs> but this is 200 historic sites across 70 square kilometers for 100 Thai baht. It's just doing the math. You could get a bus here, stay where we stayed and have entry to this temple and pay about the same as what it would be to go into Grand Palace and Wat Pro. No way. Wat Po. Very close. Oh, to do both of them. To do both, yeah. yeah. Wow. There's your options. I think this is better. Add it to the Thailand trip. Sukhothai literally translates into Dawn of Happiness and was the original settlement of the Thai people back in the 13th century. So it is 
incredibly old. The best way to get around, in our opinion, is the bikes because the wind in the hair is unreal. But you can also hire a golf buggy and there's like a tram that is a hop on hop off and takes you around the sites, which is an option as well. We could have gotten a tandem, tandem bike. And apparently they have tandem bikes. <laughs> the bikes you can hire, there is a shop just outside of the main entrance. And I'm pretty sure the golf buggies you can hire at the main entrance. Yeah. Yeah, the, shop, the bike shop that we did was 30 bar and it's like just across the road from the main entrance down the road a little bit. Heaps of bikes out the front, can't miss it. And they open at 6am so they will be here for you to get the bike and come here for opening. <laughs> Straight away, yeah. <laughs> the next stop is about 8 minutes away but I'm not complaining because it's so flat around here. The breeze you get from riding is so nice, it cools you down incredibly well. Judging by the sign, I think we need extra tickets here, but also there's places that sell coffee and cold drinks, which sound very good. 200? Okay. 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 Oh, they're so cold. <laughs> I needed that after that bike ride. So we've come to Watsi Chum, which might be the one that I was looking forward to the most. It does turn out that this is an extra ticket, so it's sort of set up into like northwest east sectors. We are now in the north, so we had to buy another 100 baht ticket. But we're gonna see what other temples we can see in this area to make it worth it. This is the home to the giant seated Buddha, and when I say giant, I mean it. To put it into perspective for you, the hand alone is about the size of a small car. This site is so significant because it is said that the Buddha once spoke. Apparently it used to speak to soldiers before they went off to war for moral support. When in reality, there is a hidden staircase inside the statue structure, which allowed a person to speak through the statue, giving the illusion that the Buddha was speaking. I'm not 100% sure where the staircase is, but we have two theories being here in person. And one is that you can go around this side of the statue and you can see here how it's hollow where the other side isn't. There might be a staircase there. The other one is that there's a hole in the wall right here and you might be able to walk through the walls and up. Either way, just wild. So we're going to go get out of the sun and we'll see you at the night market. This market is very popular. It doesn't look like there's that many stalls, but what's really nice is that you can get some food and have a picnic right on the waterfront looking at the pagoda. It looks like they put little rugs down with tables. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to find a dish called Sukhothai noodles. As the name suggests, it's local to this region. So I have my fingers crossed that we can try it tonight. <laughs> so we're trying to find these noodles but the language barrier is proving difficult. There's noodles that look incredibly similar to me but it apparently doesn't have crispy pork or something so I think we're going to get it and say it's close enough. It must be, it has to be. This is Sukhothai noodles, but the thing that made me think it could be is that I read online that Sukhothai noodles had green beans in them, which is quite odd for a Thai dish. And from a distance, I thought these were green beans. They're not. <laughs> so it's definitely not Sukhothai noodles, but it still looks good. Less than a dollar, just over a dollar. All of this for just over a dollar is wild. Ooh. Are they sweet? Mmm. <sighs> They're very spicy. I've sent Jordan to get me a Sprite. I don't do well with spice. On the Nando's, I order medium, I think, and that's, the peri-peri chips at Nando's are spicy for me. 
I'm trying to build my tolerance up, but I was not ready for that. <laughs> so I read the main difference between the Sukkotai noodles and other noodles is that they have like a sweet flavour and like a little bit of peanut too. I still think they're Sukkotai noodles. I have no real idea, but some of the characters in Thai matched on her sign and they're sweet and they look the exact same. <coughs> I think they're Sukkotai noodles. They're quite spicy. Maybe it's not Sukkotai noodles. <laughs> it's definitely not because the noodles are too thick. I'm pretty sure Sukkotai noodles are like thin noodles, almost like Pad Thai. Really good. Way too spicy for you. <laughs> yeah, I do want another bite. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. The sky looks so pretty. We went back for round two and got meat on a stick and spring rolls. What's really nice about this market is there is a fair share of tourists here, but there's also tons of locals. And it just blows my mind that we're sitting within a 13th century ruin, having a market, having a little picnic with this view. I love it here so much. Don't get us wrong, Bangkok is amazing and you more or less have to go there when you go to Thailand, but coming out to a town like this and really connecting with Thai history and Thai culture has been a godsend. We have been having so much fun, it's such a different experience. If you have a Thailand trip lined up, please try and add Sukhothai to your list. You won't regret it. One thing I didn't realise was a thing here in Sukhothai is the giving of the alms. It seems like here it might happen every single day and that it is for tourists. We've heard mixed reviews. <laughs> We've heard mixed reviews as to whether it is a safe or ethical maybe thing for tourists to partake in. But I think we might try and come watch it tomorrow from a distance to be respectful. I feel like I'm on hot ones. 